Hey everyone, welcome to the first video in our SQL series. So I noticed that on this channel we do a lot of coding in Python. We do a little bit of coding here and there in R, but we haven't yet touched on one of the most important languages that's used in data science, which is SQL, or SQL. The full form is Structured Query Language. This has been around for a long time, and it gives us a very specific way to query the data that we want from a given table, or database, or CSV file, Excel, any kind of collection of data. So uh, that said, even though it's not a video on Python, we're going to be using the Jupyter Notebook in Python because it's going to give us a really easy way, especially if you're a beginner to all this, in order to have an environment up and running where we can uh, take a CSV file on our computer, or Excel file on our computer, um, or a data frame in Python and just start doing SQL statements on it. So the main focus of this video series is not Python at all. It's on writing SQL statements to get the data we want, but we're going to be using a Python environment just to make our lives a little bit easier. So that said, the first thing we want to do is install this library in Python called Panda SQL. If you remember, Pandas is a library in Python to manipulate data frames. So we're going to create a data frame that we're going to use throughout this entire video series, and then we're going to uh, get data from it using SQL statements. So the first thing we want to do is install that library called Panda SQL. This exclamation point just kind of says run this cell as a command line cell. Uh, for me, you see the requirements already satisfied. For you, it'll probably download it for the first time. Then we have some import statements. We import pandas so that we can create that data frame. Um, but that's all we're going to do with pandas. We're not going to use any of the pandas functions because we'll be using SQL for all that. We'll import uh, from the panda SQL library we just uh, it downloaded here. We're going to import the only function we care about, which is SQL DF, which says uh, allows us to take a data frame in pandas and use SQL statements on it. We have some stuff from the random library to generate our data in the first place. So here's the cell where I'm generating the data. I don't need you to worry about this at all. We're going to see what the data looks like. So let's get started. The main focus of this first introductory video is just going to be selecting data. So it's going to keep it pretty simple at first. Um, just how do you select data from a data frame? So we see here, uh, we use the SQL DF function that we got from Panda SQL, just like this. And it takes two arguments. The first one is the SQL statement, which is the only thing that's going to be changing throughout this entire video series. The second one is globals. You don't need to worry too much about the specifics. It just allows the SQL DF function access to the data frame that we created up here, allows it access to our global variables, one of which is the student data. So we go ahead and the simplest SQL statement we can write is select star. Star is just a shorthand for select every single column from this data frame. And limit 20 just says, I just want to see the first 20 because I don't want it to print everything out. And the total size of the data is 100,000. So if I run this guy, if I run this guy, then I'm going to get the first 20 uh, rows in my data frame. And we see it's a data frame about students. So we have some randomly generated name. We have their GPA, which was calculated in a certain way, but it's between um, zero and four, of course. We have their major, which could be any one of nine majors. And we have the year in school. So either they're a first, second, third, or fourth year. So we're going to be using this very, very simple data frame to uh, understand how to write various SQL statements. So the first one is, of course, this very simple select everything from my data and this optional limit. If you don't put the limit, it'll just give you everything. Now, uh, the next modification we can make is instead of this star, sometimes you only care about certain columns, right? So what if I only care about name and GPA? I don't care about major or year for this case. Then you can just write select name and GPA from student data limiting to 20. Running that gives us, as we'd expect, just the name and the GPAs for the first 20 students. The next layer of complexity will be using distinct. So we can say select distinct a column or set of columns, as we'll see in a second. Uh, select distinct major from student data. So if we run this, we get only the distinct majors. So even though there's a bunch of history majors and a bunch of math majors in the data, this just writes history and math and all the other nine majors exactly once. Now we can also apply the count function on top of all that. So the count function just tells you how many things are in any given column. So this says select how many distinct majors there are from my data. And as we would expect, we get a single answer, which is just nine. 
Now, sometimes we want to name our functions of columns something more understandable. Like this isn't a very user-friendly way to report this. So we can use this as keyword. We can say select how many distinct majors there are and call that column num majors for friendliness. And again, from my student data. So the only change you'll see here is the name of the column got changed to something more understandable. The last thing we'll look at in this video is going to be selecting distinct combinations of two columns. So for example, here we said, I only want distinct major, but you can put distinct major, comma, year, comma, whatever other columns you want. And this will select every distinct combination of major and year from student data. The best way to explain it is just to run it really. So we see here, we have history, not just once as we had up here, but we have it a couple times. We have history here, then we have history uh, again down here. But what is distinct is each combination of uh, the major and the year. So we have a year three history majors. Then down here we have year one history majors. Somewhere else we're going to have uh, history majors in year two. And then we have every combination like that for each of the nine majors and each of the four years, which is why we have a total of 36. Starts at index zero. So there's 36 total combinations of majors and years here. So you can put distinct on multiple columns as well. Okay, so that was just a general introduction to how do you use the select statement, how do you use the distinct, count, and as keywords in SQL. Next up, we'll be looking at uh, using the where keyword. Until next time.